Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chad and this week we got a sponsor video! It's not sponsored by like a real company or anything, but sponsored by you guys, by the community. So I can keep keep the lights on, keep the microphones running. Uh, thank you so much to Brooke Spiker. She sent me this guy here. Normally I'm afraid of things called beginning Japanese is literally the title, but I definitely was pleasantly surprised with this guy. I just wanted to say thank you first and foremost to Brooke. She also sent me Skyrim inside the pages. I flipped through it and popped out a little Switch version of Skyrim. So thank you so much, Brooke. I really appreciate you. This one goes out to you, uh, and let's jump into it. Alrighty, with the intro out of the way, the music's done, we're, we're back down to level. Uh, yeah, this week is beginning Japanese, of course, an integrated approach to language and culture. I have some very, like, high praise things to say about it, and I have some things I really dislike. Uh, as with any textbook, I don't think that there is any one textbook that rules them all. But there are some that are better than others. This obviously is a beginner level textbook, so if you're looking for something more advanced, probably not for you. So, let's go to the review table and I'll see you guys in the outro. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chad. Welcome back. It, we are- oh, it feels so good, the review table. Oh. So yeah, this is Beginning Japanese Revised Edition, an integrated approach to language and culture. I don't necessarily know any of these names, nor do I know what the hell a tuttle is. But the, uh, the book indeed comes with a free CD-ROM, which you guys know what we do with these. We throw them promptly in the garbage. However, this is a loner book from, uh, one Brooke Spiker who decided to donate this for a review. So, unfortunately, I cannot throw that into the trash yet. This is apparently a part of a three book series plus a website. There's this beginning book, there's apparently an intermediate book, but I have not gotten my hands on that one yet, so I cannot tell you anything about it. There's also an advanced book, either on the way or that never came, because I can't find any information on it. You know, you, you get what you get. And quick disclaimer, I do this every single time, but I do not like to show the whole of the book, because I want you guys to go out and support whoever these people are that put their time and effort into making this book. Uh, I will show only what is necessary to give as thorough a review as I possibly can. Uh, and besides that, you should go, if, you, if, you want, if you're interested yourself, this is a cheap book, it's only 22 bucks. Uh, you could definitely go afford this yourself. And, uh, and, and it supports people who are also, these people are in the language learning community just like you and I, so let's support each other if you decide that this is for you. So I will be, uh, I, I guess the very first thing I want to talk about is format, which is why I have this guy here. Every single chapter, I'll give you guys kind of an overview of how a single chapter works. I'm using the fifth part of, I guess, chapter one. Uh, and I really, really, really enjoy this. Let me tell you why. So when you're first getting started into reading and, and everything else, I mean, this is, by the way, guys, chapter one, and they got you reading complete sentences and context. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you could tell. Hopefully, I hope my camera shows it. Uh, they are not giving you the cheat codes, the furigana, right? They're, they're not putting it on the actual picture. And there's a really cool reason for that. So if you look over here, you may see some kanji or vocabulary you do not recognize. Use the context to try to understand the meaning of those of those parts of the dialogue. I can read English. Uh, so I'm really happy that even from the get-go, they're kind of expecting you, forcing you to use the context of the pictures and to use uh, what you're learning from the words that you have in here, what that kanji specifically is read as. It's kind of forcing you to do that, which automatically I really, really enjoy. A lot of other books, including the Genki books, don't even do that. So it's really nice to kind of force you to do that. The other nice thing specifically, instead of just using dialogue, to also use pictures when you're very first starting. It's the same reason why people uh, typically start reading Japanese seriously with manga. It's because you get an entire picture in your head without necessarily needing the words. Like you don't know I don't know whoever this girl is, but th uh, you see a girl standing on a white background. She's holding a bag and a fencing helmet, it looks like. She says to Junkun, right? And then you have, here's Junkun. He wears, he's a kid with shorts and a stripe. Like, there's all this information that you don't have to read out of the Japanese in order to get the picture and where the dialogue's going. So I, the fact that they're including that from the get-go is really positive. I really enjoy that. And the nice thing is, so let's say you tried reading the context, you saw this, you still don't understand the couple of kanjis they throw in. Uh, you can come over, mia, and as you guys can see, uh, they actually add the cheat codes, right? Underneath on this side, and it's the exact same dialogue as this. It's just with the cheat codes attached. I, I like to call Furigana cheat codes, because that's that's... 
kind of what it feels like. Um, but every single chapter, they have the same reminder. Use the context. And people should be using the context regardless of if it's, uh, you know, if you're a beginner book or just reading real Japanese. It, it, it is going to serve you so, so much over the long term to try and pull meaning from the context of that word because dictionaries do not have complete definitions and words change. And it's really important to pull the meaning that the author is trying to portray from his own context to see maybe this is a new context that this word's being used in that maybe your Japanese to English dictionaries don't have yet. So I really enjoy that. Uh, another thing that's really positive about this book, when you uptake new words, they don't just attach it to an English thing. If you could see, these are your, this is how you're learning the words. And anyone that's familiar with the Genki books or the Minanoni Hongos or whatever, it's usually a list, right? It's like, uh, you have this word means this. But inside here, you can see like, so here's Ohio, right? So you have two people bowing to each other and they're speaking. So this is some type of thing when they're coming together, they're being greeted. And you can see here, the sun is coming up. Uh, and that is in, you know, contrast to maybe this guy, konbanwa, where the sun's coming down and they're still greeting each other. So you can kind of see it. This is maybe uh, an, a morning version of a greeting and this is a night version of a greeting. This is very simple, but it is so useful to not attach these to necessarily this Japanese word means X because words, weirdly enough, and I do need to make a video about this, don't have an inherent meaning. <laughs> it does not mean that this means this always. Uh, meanings of words change, they grow, they adapt, they absorb pieces of the culture, um, and a word that might mean something a hundred years ago probably doesn't mean that today, or maybe it does. Like, languages are weird, and the hive mind of humanity changes things a lot. Um, but the fact that even from the get-go, they're not just giving you the English necessarily, unless there's something that's really kind of difficult to, to come up with. They're intentionally giving you words like sayonara where they're waving goodbye and this person's clearly entering the plane and you're connecting this with goodbye. I like that a lot. I think that that's really cool, especially to get people in the habit of at the start. And I wish more books did stuff like this. I wish more of them uh, gave you guys an attachment to a thought, to an idea in the head than necessarily to an English definition. But that's also just me. Now there are things that they don't attach to words. You can see down here, there's a couple things that might be a little difficult on its own, maybe not bye-bye, but th there's a couple things, especially particles that definitely need some, some defining. Uh, but for nouns or maybe expressions, that's usually given uh, directly with pictures. And I really enjoy that. Uh, now I can't just uh, suck off this book all the time because we got to get to kanji and I got to level with you guys I never really enjoy the kanjis in these books. This one's all right. It, it's fine uh, You're getting how to write it. I never learned that I don't think I could give you correct stroke orders on anything uh, But definitely fine. It also shows you this is what's kind of nice It doesn't give you uh, what is it the Chinese and Japanese readings and using the Jap They're not using the grammatical terms to teach you these which I happen to prefer So they give you kind of the meaning and how to read it in a couple different contexts gen and moto well, they, Oh, they do give you moto good And then they show you words that it's used in which also very helpful and those words in every single chapter build on each other Which I think is super helpful. Uh, I, I will give you this heads up I counted because I have no life and I'm here to suffer so that way you guys don't have to uh, the totality of the kanjis in this book is about 150. You learn about 360 just from Genki 1. Not the Genki series, Genki 1, 360. So this is less than half. So definitely not, I mean, this is a decent introduction into how it's used. It shows you like, you know, you have Hito here or Jean or Nina or whatever, and it shows you how to, how to kind of use it with other things, which is fine. But definitely just like every textbook so far that I found, you probably want a unique kanji method. Uh, I would not rely on this book to teach you very much kanji at all. But I, I think as adults, right, you guys have probably seen most of my videos, you know that that's usually the case. Now, every section gives you a couple, I'm sure you guys assume, gives you a couple pieces of grammar. This is more or less the same in every book I've ever read. They give you a couple example sentences. They teach you kind of what it means, which is fine. Like. All, all of these are the same. The grammar in this book, though, this book, by the way, is dense. Like, this is a thick, this is a thick boy. Uh, barely gets past chapters 8, 9, and 10 of Genki 1. Barely gets past it. I wouldn't even say it really gets past it. I'd say it. this is mostly, this is pretty confidently up to chapter 7 in Genki 1, and it's kind of sketchy on the rest. So this is less grammatical information than the Genki books, but it's not trying to be a Genki book, and it's also not trying to be a, a JLPT book. So trying to compare this to like, what JLPT level is this? I mean, clearly it's not even five, but it's, it's not trying to be that, right? It's trying to just get people introduced into the language, and I think if that's his objective, it's doing a great job of it. They have this self-check that allows you to kind of just see, hey, are you understanding the concepts? Are you getting it? 
The troubling thing was, I don't think I saw answers for this. There might just be answers on the actual website, but I, I didn't find answers for these. Maybe you need a teacher to help you with these, or I don't know, maybe there's an extra workbook this didn't come with. One thing that's also kind of bad, I mean, most of this practice is all the same in all these books. You're more or less going to get the same type of practice. If you consider both of these practice, if you look, now you're on to part six. So there, there's only two pages of any type of practice in any given part of the chapter. That is not enough at all. That is definitely not enough. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of upset about that. One thing that is nice, though, is that this does give you cultural context. Like, this actually has giant sections that talk about all these kind of pages that give you cultural insights. I like that. But does that need to immediately be in the textbook when, really, the, the primary part of most language learning textbooks is to learn the language. You can learn the culture from anything. You don't need to buy a textbook to learn culture. If I had to critique this and give it out to, to the people who made this, although I do really like this, I like the core that this has, if you guys could take all of the cultural stuff that's taking up extra pages and move that off to your website, move that off uh, maybe to an extra workbook that's like $10, something that's really affordable, um, to keep those cultural insights, and then in those cultural insights, make that extra homework. Make that extra practice, make that extra everything, right? Like all the extra work that you can't fit in this because there's only so thick you can make a book and I think you guys are pushing it. It would definitely benefit you. But keeping it in here, that's a waste of space. Like you guys can see we're on chapter two here, right? You get a little bit of a dialogue, same thing. Uh, there's your dialogue uh, with the cheat codes in there, how to learn the new words, some basic uh, grammar. Uh, there's your six pieces of kanji. Uh, and then you have, this is the rest of your grammar. Self, literally practice from here is right there. Oh, this one's a bit bigger. So there's two kind of pages for it. And then we're basically on to, to chapter three. So I would recommend you definitely need more work than this. And to be fair, it does have a website, which I guess I can show you right now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Chad. Just a quick heads up. Yeah, I don't have any of my lights or microphones or anything. I just realized I didn't uh, really film this section. And I kind of thought I should because it does involve the book. Uh, the website, as you can see as I drag my handsome self down here, uh, the book has a website that goes with it that also helps you study Japanese. The weird thing is it looks like it's from 1997, um, back in the Geoscape stuff, even though I think this copyright 2010 is a bit of a, uh, a misnomer there. <laughs> Uh, I, I have signed up for this. I'm afraid I'm going to get a thousand spam emails, but I have been looking around. The site looks like it could be something great if they took, I don't know, if they just put it on a free Wix website. I'm pretty sure Wix websites look better than this. But uh, as you can see, they give you uh, a lot of stuff for the beginners, right? You can get practice books for your Kana, uh, some flashcards you guys won't use because hopefully you guys are going to be using some type of like Anki or Memorize or whatever the hell, any of those. Um, but then it also has, you know, Q&A, some verb groups, you know, nothing nothing too crazy, stuff based on your chapters. I did find out, though, there is an intermediate textbook. Who would have guessed? I found out from this website, but there's essentially nothing of use here for me, really. Like, some, I mean, let's click on one of these. Yeah, I mean, it just looks like garbage, but I guess there is, I don't know, uh, some practice stuff on here, maybe? Uh, there's basically nothing on the advance. Like, there's not even a book cover. Maybe they haven't published it yet. I don't know. But I can't find anything like that. Uh, I did find out that... Yeah, look at this. Meet the characters. Four things there. You can be a teacher of this and sign up to be a teacher. Uh, if you're teaching this book, uh, I don't think it costs anything. And it'll give you some plans and ideas and files and stuff. The reason I created an account, though, to talk to you guys was I saw this section called Games. And it gives you some things with like vocab that you can play these flash games, but no matter what I could do, I'm clicking right now, I'm clicking and can't get anything done, uh, which is not fun. So I was like, well, maybe I have to create an account and it'll pop up, or maybe, by the way, that's not the case, maybe I'll click the beta version thing here, maybe it'll work. So my Adobe blocks it. However, even though I have it per permitted on this page, it still blocks it, so I don't, I don't really know what else to do. Maybe the games here will be good, but you can pretty much go to Yahoo Games, the Japanese Yahoo Games, and play Flash games for free on there in Japanese. So, yeah, just wanted to film this up for you guys. So yeah, but as you guys can see, the, the website's kind of garbage, so not a lot of help. I overall thought that this was a really, really interesting addition to the beginner series of, of anyone. Uh, and it, its price is so cheap. It's $22. Uh, 
Uh, whereas Genki's like 40. I'm talking brand new, by the way, but you can buy these books on Amazon used for like $9. So really affordable, not at all a bad source. I didn't find any inherently wrong info when I was scanning through it. It does give you a free cat toy, so that's pretty cool. All in all, like not a bad, not a bad section. Definitely things to be improved, right? I don't, the website's from 97, it's horrible. Oh, I just wish it was so much better. I wish they had more practice and they could even put like free practice books online, which I think would help tremendously on their website. But you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, I also probably before I judge this book, it would also be fitting for me to check out the intermediate. So maybe that'll be a future video. But for now, I think uh, I think we've done this enough justice to give you guys that. The last little piece of information I'll give you on this book uh, is that again, kanji about 150, genki ones about 360. So really not a great kanji book because even the genki books are very insufficient on their kanji studies. One place where this does shine though is in their vocabulary. There's over a thousand pieces of vocab that you'll learn before this is done. And if you guys know anything about the JLPT, which I hate comparing these books that are tr not trying to be JLPT books to that, but JLPT N5 is like 500 words, so it's double that. It's insufficient on the kanji, but definitely okay for, uh, way more than okay for the vocabulary if you're studying for that. Otherwise, still, a thousand words. I know people who've been studying for almost a decade on and off who don't know a thousand words. So it's, it's not a bad book. And I like the fact that it's kind of in a manga format and it shows you the culture and it gives you other things to latch onto when the language inevitably becomes frustrating because I promise you, you will find something that will make you want to bang your head against a wall. And I also promise you, as long as you don't give up, you'll figure that out. It'll eventually not want to make you want to bang your head against the wall. Uh, but this book really, I think for a beginner, I would put this in terms of net content and value just below Genki. And if they made, a, like, this is a revised edition, if they made one more revise with some of the things that I said, I would honestly start recommending this over Genki. But if they didn't, and they keep it like this, I would say definitely a decent supplemental book. Um, if your school's using this, uh, you know, it's not a bad place to start. You're not, it's not like you're gonna not learn Japanese from it. Uh, and I think there is a lot of good, so I'm focusing on the good. I'm not just trying to crap on every single book that isn't the gold standard. There are definitely beneficial things, and I am really happy that this is on my shelf, and I'm very thankful for you, Brooke, for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. So, back to you, Studio Chad. So, uh, you guys kind of got my thoughts on this, right? You know, the goods, the bads, the mehs. What is your opinion on beginning Japanese. It's not even beginner Japanese, it's beginning Japanese. Do you guys like this book? Was this something you guys might buy? Do you prefer something else? What's your favorite beginning textbook? Beginning textbook. Beginner textbook. My god, this book is rotting my brain already. If you can tell, I've worked a long time on this, so I'm very tired. You guys can leave those in the comments down below. I do read all of them. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, or anything of that sort, you definitely can leave those also in the comments. I do, again, read all of them. If you guys like the video, it would help me a lot if you would like it down below. It tells the YouTube algorithm, hey, this dude's not horrible, which would mean a lot to me. Also, we are less than 100 subs away from 15,000 subscribers. So hey, if you're watching this and you want to throw a bro a bone, may maybe go ahead and throw me a bone in the form of a subscription here. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, uh, and I can get my screenshot. Other than that, I've been streaming on Twitch a lot during the Rona. Uh, I've just been on there usually about 8 to 10 p.m. at night on Mountain Standard Time. So you guys can go over there on Twitch. I'm like three subs away, or followers. They use followers over there. Three followers away from 100. So that would mean a lot if you guys could go over there. Check me out on twitch.tv forward slash Chad Zimmerman. Not a lot about Japan. Mostly just video games and watching movies and videos with you guys. But hey, it's a great way to get in contact with me. Finally, I should, I think, next Wednesday, have a really good interview up for you guys. I know you guys really appreciated the Steve Kaufman interview. This is another big YouTuber. In fact, it was the primary one that people asked me to talk to, but it should be up next Wednesday if everything goes according to plan. So be looking forward to that. Uh, everyone stay safe, wash your hands, call your moms, they miss you. Love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.